Hello and welcome to this CBT Nuggets training series for exam 1Z0052, Oracle Database 11G, Administration 1. My name is Tim Warner and I'm happy to be your trainer. Our agenda for this introductory nugget is as follows. We're going to discuss Oracle certification. That's probably why you purchased this Nugget series anyway, right? I'm going to walk you through how Oracle certification is set up, and then we're going to segue, not using a gyroscopic scooter, but just by means of transition, to how I created this course and mapped it to all of the appropriate 1Z0052 exam objectives. We'll finish this introductory Nugget with some tips and tricks on how to register for the 052 exam and some test-taking strategies to decrease your learning curve. Oracle certification is going to depend upon the product that you're interested in. Of course, in this Nugget series, we're focused on the Oracle database, which is really their flagship product. However, Oracle offers certifications in all of their other technologies. Over the last several years, for instance, Oracle has gotten heavily into the what's called the middle tier, or the application server market. They purchased some really powerful players in this regard. PeopleSoft comes to mind, and their acquisition acquisitions still continue more recently to their acquisition of MySQL and Sun Microsystems. The ground level certification for Oracle Database 11G is called OCA, or Oracle Certified Associate. And this is where we are right now. This series covers you 100% for the 1Z0052 DBA1 exam. You'll notice one other block before you become an Oracle Certified Associate. You need to demonstrate to Oracle that you have basic skills, or if you already have expert skills, expert level skills, in the Structured Query Language, or SQL. Of these three choices, I would recommend if you're new to Oracle that you do the 051 test. This is Oracle Database 11G SQL Fundamentals 1. Now whether you tackle the SQL Fundamentals 1 test first or 052, I would leave that up to your current skill level. Most candidates with whom I've discussed this tend to start with SQL to make sure that they're very solid with the language because sure enough, and I guess you would expect this, by the time we come to DBA1 we're going to be working with SQL and it will be assumed that you have at least a moderate level of familiarity with the language. If you already are an expert with Oracle SQL then you can optionally do the 047, the Oracle Database SQL Expert test. I would not recommend, unless you're an Oracle old-timer and you may have already passed this exam in the past, the 007 test that's for a, well, two versions back version of Oracle Database, Oracle 9i SQL. So the take-home message here, friends, is once you've passed your SQL Fundamentals 1 and your 052, you become an OCA. Now, of these two exams, the SQL Fundamentals 1 is more convenient because you can actually take it from any computer in the world. You don't have to go to a testing center like you do for 052 and the rest of the exams. We'll give more specific details on that in just a little bit. Now, as we start moving our way up the ladder in Oracle Database Certification, the next level is the professional level. And in order to even start this track, you have to be an Oracle Certified Associate. You're probably familiar with the expression, you have to learn to crawl before you can walk. Same thing goes with this. You have to be an OCA before you you can be an OCP. Note also that there's a training requirement at the professional level. Besides passing a single exam, the 1Z0053 DBA2 test, you have to complete an Oracle-approved instructor-led or online training course, and then submit your course completion form along with your past exam, and you become an OCP. Finally, once you have years of experience in Oracle, you can go up to the master level, and this involves professional level as a prerequisite. Again, you have not one but two training courses to do here. You have an exam and some forms. There's more work. That's beyond our scope, so I'll leave it up to you to check out the Oracle Certified Master Track. We can learn about all of this Oracle certification stuff by visiting the Oracle website. In particular, we're interested in what Oracle calls Oracle University. Now let's have a look at the specific exam objectives that are covered on the 052 test and, of course, what we're covering in the CBT 
GT Nuggets training series. This is a screenshot that I've captured from the Oracle University website. I apologize about the small text. Basically, if I were to sum up the 052 exam objectives, also called the DBA1, we'll just call it DBA1 from now on to make things easier. I would say that we're starting at the basics, or at least <laughs> what are called formally the basics. If you're new to Oracle, this can be a blinding amount of information. You have somewhat of a leg up if you're coming from another enterprise class relational database management system, for instance, Microsoft SQL Server, IBM's DB2, or even to a lesser degree, Oracle's own MySQL relational database. But anyway, the exam topics start with understanding the Oracle architecture, how to install Oracle database, a lot of terminology, things like the difference between an instance and a database, what is a table space, and how does that relate to data files, all of this kind of stuff. Running the database configuration assistant to deploy a database, managing an Oracle instance, this involves managing memory structures, background processes, initialization files, Oracle Net, configuring client server network connectivity, storage structures, more terminology, user security, security is always a hot button topic in information security, locking, data concurrency, undo data, more on security, database maintenance, you'll notice we'll see references to maintenance, performance management, and backup and recovery. Now those three objectives qualify for about 20% of the DBA1 outline. That having been said, the DBA2, when it comes time for you to do that at the OCP level, focuses almost entirely on performance management and disaster recovery. So by the end of your training here for DBA1, you're going to have an excellent foundation in those topics, and that's going to put you very far ahead as far as preparing for the DBA2 test, if and when that day comes for you. We're going to deal with how to patch Oracle 11G, again, more on backup and recovery. I guess it constitutes more than 20%, maybe as much as 30% of this outline. And then we'll complete by looking at moving data. We'll work with SQL loader, external tab tables, data pump, your what are called your extract, transform, and load, import, out, import, export technologies. Now specifically about this CBT Nuggets course, the first thing I want to draw your attention to is that I've structured these 20 nuggets that comprise the course exactly to the outline that I just showed you from the Oracle University website. And the reason I always include this information in my CBT Nuggets training series is that I know as an IT professional and as an exam candidate myself, I always look for holistic training that's not going to have gaps in my knowledge. I want to make sure that I've covered every bullet point and even sub bullet point on an exam's blueprint. And that's what we have. I've even borrowed the language from the Oracle University website in naming these nuggets. Therefore, I would characterize the main audience for this training as those who are, of course, interested in attaining Oracle certification, but also, just as importantly, folks who are looking to do DBA work with Oracle Database. Now, I'm not going to make too many assumptions. I'll make as few as possible. I did mention earlier that the SQL Fundamentals 1 exam, most people tend to take and pass that first before doing the Administration 1 test. We're going to assume that you do have a moderate amount of ability with the structured query language. Now, as it happens, I'm working on a CBT Nugget series to cover the SQL Fundamentals 1 test. Therefore, if you have a Nugget streaming subscription, please be on the lookout for that training, and you might want to do the two courses in parallel or go and do the SQL training and then come back to this. So that's really about the, the main assumption that I have to make simply because the volume of data that comprises this course is so broad and so deep, it's, it can very easily be overwhelming. However, because I'm aware of that, I'm going to take things step by step and we're going to build knowledge moving nugget by nugget by nugget. Consequently, I think, in my opinion, that you're going to get the most out of this training if you follow these nugget movies sequentially. So after one, where we are now, go into exploring the database architecture and then so on down the line. What I tend to do is build knowledge such that later in the course we'll refer to things we learned earlier in the course. Earlier in the course we'll foreshadow things that we'll see later in the course. I find this helps my students build a comprehensive web of knowledge that you'll be able to take into your exam studies and as I said, I presume that at least some of you want to gain employment working as a database administrator 
administrator with Oracle Database. Finally, because I do have expertise in other major RDBMS platforms, specifically Microsoft SQL Server and MySQL. I'll be sure to draw analogies, comparisons, and contrasts between Oracle and these other platforms to help speed you along your way as far as upgrading your skill set. Now, let's complete this introductory nugget by considering the 1Z0052 test specifically. As I mentioned earlier when I showed you the outline for the OCA certification, the SQL Fundamentals 1 test can be taken from any computer. You don't have to report to a testing center. However, for 052, you have to register to take that test at either a Pearson View or a Prometric testing center. Some people express confusion as far as the difference there is no difference these are just simply registrars that work with different IT certification vendors like Oracle like Microsoft like Apple etc in order to dispense their exams therefore I would if I were you check out both of their websites create an account and see which one is closer to you you might have a corporate training center nearby that's a view center you might have a nearby university or vocational school that's a prometric center I've found that the experience between the two is about the same. The cost for registration is always the same, $125 an attempt, and that is per attempt. 052 is a computer-based test that consists of 70 multiple choice questions, therefore you're not going to see simulation items. If you've taken other certification exams in the past, specifically Cisco and Microsoft, that tend to include real live simulations, you might wish that they did that with Oracle, maybe you don't, I don't know, but you don't have to worry about it. It's just your straight ahead single answer multiple choice where there's one correct answer and multiple answer multiple choice where you have several choices and you're asked to select a subset of those. In my opinion, Oracle is very fair as far as time is concerned. You have well over one minute per question. 90 minutes is the limit. And also, I think that the passing score is pretty reasonable compared to other tests I've taken. And I've taken hundreds of certification exams over the last dozen or 15 years, however long it's been. 66% is what we're looking at. And remember, a 66% is equivalent to a 100% as far as IT certification certification exams. There's really no point other than just, I guess, for ego gratification to feel bad, let's say, if you get a 69 or 70 and a colleague gets a 90. Believe me, this test is blisteringly difficult. I would rank the Oracle tests up there in complexity right along with the most difficult Cisco tests, and Cisco tests are known industry-wide to be a bear. To that end, let me, without breaking my non-disclosure agreement, which all of us as test takers are required to affirm before we take a test, essentially the NDA says we're not going to share intimate knowledge of specific exam items with anybody, period, and I'm not going to do that. But what I will say, my impressions of the test are that there's a lot of theory that yes, there are going to be some practical questions where you may see exhibits or graphics. Maybe you'll see a screen capture of Oracle Enterprise Manager. Maybe you'll see a run of a log file. Maybe you'll see an interactive SQL Plus session and you'll see quite a bit of SQL code and you'll be asked to interpret it. Those are more practical questions that I find the best preparation for is to practice with Oracle in not a production environment, but in a test environment. On the other hand, please don't just think you can soft pedal the theory, the things about background processes and memory structures and understanding the mechanics of the system global area versus the program global area. We're going to be running into this in the next nugget to a great degree of depth. You're actually going to be asked detailed questions about these things. So understand you need to come in here with a pretty robust skill set. The questions I would say if I were to say something semi-negative about the test is that I think the questions sometimes are a little bit too picky. In other words, the folks who wrote the exam questions knew a little bit too much about Oracle for their own good. <laughs> In sum, this is a challenging test, and if you do get by it and do pass it, you have my heartiest congratulations and admiration. Why don't we now pop out onto the web and visit the Oracle website? Their website is, is 
You probably already know or can surmise Oracle.com. I find that coming in through the front page is the most efficient way to access their certification portal. You know how it is with websites. Sometimes companies change the outlay of their pages and you might not find it through a traditional search engine. At the Oracle homepage, you'll notice that I'm logged in. You should definitely create a free Oracle Technology Network account. Oracle has done some pretty good work with single sign-on such that your single account can be used to access access several Oracle services. More on that later on in the course. But anyway, at least as of this recording in April 2011, the waiting...